Amen. You can actually still get the notes on YouVersion. That's right. If you right. just search underneath the bench, you can find our notes there. And uh, we're going to continue to put them up there. So uh, if you don't know how to do that, see me after church and I'll help you. Joshua chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 today. Amen. Are you thankful for the word? Yes. Amen. It says this. Then Joshua rose early in the morning and they set out from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people saying, when you see the Ark of the Covenant set out of the Lord your God and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Tell your neighbor this morning, I'm going after God this year. I just tell your neighbor, I'm going to go after God. I, I, I'm going to go after God this year. Whatever it costs me, how, however long I got to see, whatever I got to do, tell your neighbor, I'm going after God. Amen. If I got any people going after God in the house, go after it. Yet, there shall be a space between you and it. About 2,000 cubits by measure. That's about. That's about 10 football fields. That's a long way. Do not come near it that you may know the way by which you must go. And then he says, for you have not passed this way before. And then I didn't get the last scripture on the screen there. I'm so sorry. It says this, and Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Right. Can we pray today? Heavenly Father, I pray that your anointing would fill this place and fill my heart today. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, most of all. And God, I pray more than for this church, Lord, that as we step into 2019, we would do so, God, with the heart of a lion, with the boldness of the Spirit. And God, we choose to believe you. And we, as we approach this new year, we do so with the confidence and an assurance that victory is ours. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let me just give you a little background here today. The children of Israel... We're at the point of crossing over into new territory. But it's interesting to me that God doesn't always do things in the exact same way. Forty years before, when Moses had stood at the Red Sea, and then, you know, the e Egypt's armies were after them, we know that he held his rod up in the air, and, and we remember that the Red Sea parted in two, in, in half, and, and uh, thank you so much, Jerry. Amen. Thank you. And, and God parted the waters. But this time, God does something new. He wants for the priest to carry the Ark of the Covenant right into the Jordan River. Now, we, we know but from looking back, most of us know this story, that God did, in fact, divide the Jordan River. But imagine for a moment that you are one of those Israelites. How many know they had to have faith? They had to believe God, especially the priests, all right? They had to march right into that water and, and expect that something would happen. And as we get ready to march into 2019, you and I, we also need faith, all right? In fact, we ought to be just as excited about 2019 as they were about marching into that right. promised land. That's right. So I want you to imagine that vast crowd of about 2 million Hebrews standing upon the east bank of the Jordan River, just north of the Dead Sea. Before them in that springtime season, where it had been raining and raining, the waters of the Jordan were all brown and churning. How many have ever seen a river at flood stage, right? Imagine that before them. And it was as, it was as though that river was challenging their audacity. It if not even the very sanity, how were they going to get across that river? And on the other side of the river was walled cities, giants, you know, more battles that they had to face. And the Hebrews had camped for about three days. And many were wondering what is going to happen? What's our leader going to do? Uh, you know, 
all they knew was that he had said tomorrow we're going to go across this invasion day. We're going to cross the Jordan. But, but they had undoubtedly went down and looked at the Jordan. They saw the brown churning water. They saw uh, that there were no boats. There were no bridges. They couldn't get across on little rocks that stuck out of the water. Uh, you know, and who knew what would lie on the other side? All they knew was that a new season was awaiting them. And Joshua had said these words, you've not been this way before. And you know, these guys had been, been in quite a few places, right? They had wandered through the desert, years of dry sand and blowing hot winds and unfulfilled dreams and nomadic invaders and years of eating manna and drinking from a stream that had followed them. You know, and finally they had got to the place where they were saying, we are going to advance and we're going to get to the other side. And I'm sure that some of the more visionary of the group was saying, tomorrow we begin a glorious future. And some of the less believing uh, were working. They were saying, did anybody tell those priests about the muddy water and how that mud can suck you in? Did anybody notice the current that was going? I hope somebody knows how to swim. They were probably a little concerned about that. And how many of you know that the enemy would have loved to have brought fear into that camp? I mean, these guys hadn't crossed many, many rivers. Uh, in, in, in their journeys, but 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 they were determined to get across, and so what they did was the scripture tells us that that, that early in the morning the priests and the Levites got that ark of the covenant. Now the ark of the covenant was a beautiful thing to behold. It was built out of wood and and uh, it was covered in gold on the inside and the outside. It was about four feet long and about two feet wide. There were beautiful gold cherubim. That came up on the top of it where the mercy seat was and the scripture tells us that the very presence of God abided between those cherubim on the mercy seat and you see this was a powerful thing for them because it was a symbol of what who God was. May we never forget church of God who our Jesus is today. May we never, may we always remember that amen his presence is with us. Amen. Inside of that ark were three things. The first thing was a, was a jar of manna. Manna was supernatural food that God had fed them with. And that, that, rep, that manna represented God's provision. I want you to understand that as you march into 2019, you do so understanding that there's a jar of manna for you. Come on. There's provision for you. Everything that you're going to need in 2019, God's going to provide it. Because his word says, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Yeah. And then, and then there was Aaron's rod that budded that was inside of there. Now, how many of you know you don't take a stick and cut it off and put it over in the corner, and a couple of weeks later, the thing is growing and budding and, you know, producing flowers? But that was what Aaron's rod did. That was a supernatural thing. And may we never forget that we have a supernatural God that goes with us. Amen. He's able to open doors for us. He's able to bring us complete victory over sin. He's able to do all kinds of things because because he's a powerful and a mighty God. Amen. And then also were the Ten Commandments, stone tablets, uh, which represented the Word of God. And it was because of the Word of God that they were even going to be attempt to even attempt to go into the promised land. So I can imagine the faith that they must have had as they started to march towards that. Those priests picked up that ark. And they were marching right towards that river. It was swollen. It was brown. It was churning. Big old pieces of trees were going by. And, and you know, things were floating in the river. And, and, and so, you know, the most amazing thing happened. As soon as their feet of the priest touched the river, I mean, the, I think the bottom of their feet got wet. But after that, God began to do something that was amazing. It was as though two great invisible hands, one to the north at a city named Adam that is beside Zaratan, and one to the south at the Great Salt Sea. It just seemed like they were pulling, it was pulling the river apart. Can you imagine what that must have looked like as the waters just began to part and they started walking through on dry ground? How many of you think that there was some praise that went on in the camp that day? How many of you think that there were some people who got some tambourines out and they began to dance and praise the Lord? How many of you think the people were excited amen, to march across that river on dry land? You say, well, Pastor,
Shabbat, what does that have to do with me? I'm going to tell you what it has to do with you. You've got to remember that the very same God that parted those waters is going with you in the 2019. The very same chief God that was there and did that incredible miracle is the God that you and I serve. You say, well, Pastor, I don't know if I'm going to have problems in 2019. Let me tell you something you might, okay? But let me tell you something you don't have to worry about it because your God is bigger than any problem. Come on. Amen. You say, well, I hope that he does some things. Listen, I just feel like this is a word for the Lord for somebody. God's going to part some waters that need to be parted. You've been wandering for a few years. You've been saying, God, I need something to happen. Let me tell you something. I believe that the God of heaven is about to part some waters in this place. Amen. Amen. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there is nothing that is more exciting than an adventurous life with Jesus. I don't want ordinary. I don't want ordinary church. I don't want ordinary, you know, anything ordinary. I want God's blessing to be present. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever.